I would love to read an interaction I had with a guy recently because I think it's a brief crash course in sticking to your guns, speaking up and not feeling afraid of where the conversation will go. So to give you a brief backstory, I met this guy in a party and it was a celebrity's party and he works on the celebrity's team. So outside of him working on the celebrity's team, he also works in a very popular nightclub in London. So he's got that sort of access, whether it's me wanting to get into the club or me wanting to go to cool events, I imagine he would be that guy, right? So the night I met him, he actually invited me and my friend to come to the club that night. It was a Sunday night, I believe. But my friend had just started her period, so she wasn't really feeling it. She was tired. And at this point, we've already been in that party for a good like two hours, dancing for a solid two hours, literally. But I was up for it because I just thought, you know what? This is an opportunity for me to have this guy in my network, if anything. I don't see him as someone that I'm necessarily keen to date, but he could be a cool person to know. And I know that he fancies me, so I can use that to my advantage. And so I did. (laughs) So what had happened was, that night he said, if I come to the club, then he'll make sure I'm treated like a queen. And when he said that, I thought, okay, I'll give this a shot. I mean, I've been to that club before. It's not really, it's not really my thing. I don't really like that club because it's a club in Mayfair. And if you don't know about London clubs and Mayfair slash central London specifically, it's a lot of colorism, okay? They just like mixed race women and white women. And if you are going to be a dark skinned girl, you kind of need to either know a promoter or have really attractive friends or be super super attractive yourself to be able to just get into the same club that these white girls and mixed race girls are walking in and out of with no hassle so i knew that i'll be fine because he's the one who's directly invited me i'm on the guest list it's cool so i've exchanged numbers with him so that i can let him know of my movements for the night because my plan was to go home from the party change my clothes and then head to the club which is what i did so I allowed him to know that I was on my way and when I arrived I let him know it was very smooth to get in it was fine now what had happened was when I entered the club mind you it's a Sunday Sunday is not a day to be going to the club but I got in there and it was just a bit dead like I just didn't really like the energy it was like you know when the music ain't really given it's kind of sparse because to be fair the night is sort of beginning but at this point it was 1 a.m and I'm like "Mm, it's 1 a.m and the night is still sort of beginning oh it's gonna be a long night so even though I was with him what I didn't like was the fact that first of all I wasn't even in the VIP section now he did offer me VIP but it would have meant that I would be on my own and I wouldn't go to VIP with him I think because he was working at that club He had other people to entertain, if that makes sense. And that's what I saw. I saw that he was surrounded by all these like, you know, that Kardashian Middle Eastern filler look that those girls have. Like the light skinned Middle Eastern looking girls that all have that same face. They all had that same face. And he was entertaining them on his table. And I was like, you know what? I just don't have any business being here. And I was just getting a bit irritated because it's like, I could have been at home right now removing my makeup, catching up on my YouTube videos, eating crisp. And I'm here in this club looking good. And this guy is not even giving me his full attention. So my face kind of showed the disappointment. And so he turned around and he said, you look so sexy. And I was like, "Mm, that's sweet of you. But I wasn't happy with the fact that I wasn't really getting the attention that I was told I was going to get, which is queen treatment. So I said to him, can you get me a VIP pass, please? I'm going to go to VIP. Because at this point, I've accepted, you know what? I'm already on my own in this guy's section because he's giving all these other people attention and these girls are lapping it up because he's a tall, good-looking black guy and because these are the girls that love black dick. You know know that whole Kim Kardashian-style fetishization of black dick? It's very that energy that I was noticing. 
And most black men, they don't mind it, innit? Because the women are attractive and they love the attention. So everybody wins. Me, I was like, let me just go to VIP and be on my own. But at least I'll be in VIP so I can talk to other men who possibly have money or I can at least just be in an environment where I can just experience the camaraderie of other people's energy because this area I'm in is a little sparse and I'm not liking it. So he got me a VIP pass and I went into VIP, stood on my own. And for a while I was dancing by myself, which I didn't mind. And eventually some some women who were in a section with their men, um, they spotted me like, oh my God, slam flower. And I was like, hey girl. And I just joined their section. It was fine. I didn't talk to any of the, of the men. It didn't feel like it was that kind of vibe. But I just, I had a better time in that section than I was in where I initially was with the guy that brought me to the club. But I noticed that I didn't really see that guy that brought me to the club anymore. He kind of disappeared. Which I was like, fair play. I mean, he's working anyway, so he's probably going to be here and there. I wasn't paying any more attention to him from that point, And I just continued to enjoy myself some more. But I wasn't drinking. I didn't have any alcohol because I just wasn't, it was, I just wasn't in the mood. So I guess maybe around half two, I left and I went home. Um, but because my phone was in my bag, I didn't even see when he had messaged me around the time I left. Or maybe just before I left, he messaged me, hey, babe, I had to leave. I took someone to the hospital. And I was irritated seeing that text as I'm making my way home. So I'm like, you took someone to the hospital. Sorry, first response unit. Sorry, paramedic. Or got ambulance. Or got 999. Or share 911. <laughs> like, okay, whatever. I don't really care. So I just ignored the message and I went to bed. Following afternoon at 2 p.m., he messages me, hey, I say, a couple hours later, hello, I wasn't impressed by yesterday at all, especially because you created the impression I would be treated like a queen. You seemed more preoccupied with all the women you were entertaining as your guests. Anyway, hope you had a fun night. He responds to me a few hours later. Oh my days, I'm so sorry. You came in looking so moody, so I wasn't sure what to do. There was no smile, and I was just not sure if I should give you some space or engage. I'm sorry you felt that way. Now that response irritated me. Because if you notice what's happening here, it's deflection. There's no sense of ownership or desire to repair. It's straight up, you looked moody, so I didn't know what to do. You weren't smiling, so I didn't know if I should say hello to you or leave you alone, which is not good enough because you told me I was going to get queen treatment because I'm a queen, obviously, duh. So if the queen is not satisfied, it's your job to satisfy her. He didn't make enough effort to satisfy me so the result he got was me not smiling my whole 32 teeth in the air hours later around 12 a.m he messages me hey so i get back to him maybe like half an hour later when i've seen my phone and i say to him your response to me saying i didn't feel properly taken care of as your guest is disappointing unless you're contacting me to discuss making it up to me, there's nothing to talk about. He gets back to me the following afternoon. Three laughing emojis. I swear, I like you for real. I want to make it up to you for real. Your vibe is lit. Let's go have dinner. We can also do the club, but dinner privately on me for sure. So... <laughs> I get back to him and I say, hey, the impression I have of you is that you're a boring guy who doesn't know how to handle a situation he's brought a woman into. But I'm open to being proven wrong if you can impress me at dinner. If you let me know where you have in mind for dinner, I'll let you know if I like it. It was important for me to talk to him in that way because from me already being like you need to make it up to me I'm disappointed I actually wasn't even expecting him to 
say what he said. I wasn't expecting him to be like, I like you, let's have dinner. I thought he was going to be a little bitch because he's a bit young. When I say a bit young, he's older than me. He's probably like early 30s, but I consider that really young. Anyway, after I've said to him, the impression I have of you is that you're a boring guy who doesn't know how to handle a situation he's brought a woman into, but I'm open to being proven wrong if you can impress me at dinner. If you let me know what you have in mind for dinner, I'll let you know if I like it. He comes back to me, he says, ouch, you don't know me at all, but all good. I was thinking somewhere like Ennish in Oxford Street, but if you don't want a Nigerian restaurant, we can choose a different one. So I say to him, you're right. This is your chance to show me who you are. Because obviously he said to me, you don't know me. And he's saying that in the context of me saying, I think he's a boring guy who doesn't know how to handle a situation he's brought a woman into. That's me using reverse psychology on purpose, by the way, because... Obviously, he's going to be like, well, I'm not a boring guy and I can handle a situation I've brought a woman into. I need to prove to this woman that I'm not boring and that I can handle what I've started. That's why I was saying those things, just so you are up to speed. So in response to him saying to me, I was thinking somewhere like Ennish in Oxford Street. But if you don't want a Nigerian restaurant, we can choose a different one. I said, you're right. This is your chance to show me who you are. I've been to Ennish many times And whilst I love the food there, it will be nice to try a new experience with you. I haven't been to Stork Mayfair before, but it's another Nigerian restaurant I've heard good things about. Have you been? Because basically, Enish is nice, right? Probably my favourite Nigerian restaurant in the UK. But I go there all the time. And if a guy is hashtag making it up to me, which I don't even think dinner is enough, but... Based on the proportion of the offence, I don't want to necessarily be like, you need to take me shopping because no, no, no. It's like, no, it has to be, the the repair needs to be proportional to the offence, right? So the reason why I'm leaving the door a crack open to see if he's going to repair this, see if he can redeem himself is because I still want to be in network with him. Like I still want to have him just as a guy who, even if it's a friend's thing, a guy who, if I want to go to the club, he's my plug. Or if I want to be at more celebrity parties of the nature of the one I met him at, he's also a plug, you know? So in response to me in my last message being like, I haven't been to Stalk Mayfair before, but it's another Nigerian restaurant I've heard good things about. Have you been? He says, he says I've never been. Let's do it. So I just sent him the, the, the red dress dancing emoji. He says, let me know when works for you. I say, I can do either tomorrow evening or Sunday evening. Because at this point, it's a Thursday that we're talking. And tomorrow evening that I'm mentioning is a Friday and obviously Sunday evening. I can do either tomorrow evening or Sunday evening, which works for you. He says, I could do tomorrow. I say, 8 p.m. tomorrow works for me. Is that good for you too? At this point, it's like three o'clock in the afternoon that we're having this conversation. He says, I need to get back to you tonight because I have to work tomorrow. So if not 8 p.m., then 9 p.m. should be fine. I say, no worries, let me know. He says, okay. So this conversation has come to an end around 4 p.m. in the afternoon of that day. And the last thing that he said to me was, I'm going to get back to you tonight. So the night has come. I have not heard from him. We are now in the today, right now, real time of the conversation. I've just looked at my phone to read these messages to you. And he says to me at 1 p.m. at the time of recording this particular conversation, it's 2 p.m. But the message came in at 1 p.m. He says, hey. Yeah, 8 p.m. works for me. Now, let me tell you what I've got a problem with. What do you think is the issue here? This is a 10 mark question. What do you think is the issue here? Because all he said to me is, hey, 8 p.m. works for me. Now, on the surface, nothing wrong with that. He did get back to me. He said 8 p.m. works for me, meaning that today, this evening, he believes he'll be seeing me at 8 p.m. But if you think back to the last conversation we had last night, or I should say yesterday afternoon, he said to me yesterday afternoon, I need to get back to you tonight because I might have to work tomorrow. 
I don't like that he didn't get back to me yesterday night. So do you know what I'm going to say to him in response? I'm going to say, you said you'd get back to me yesterday night and I didn't hear from you. So I made other plans. Hope you have a nice weekend. Hope you have a nice weekend sent. So I've sent to him, you said you'd get back to me yesterday night and I didn't hear from you. So I made other plans. Hope you have a nice weekend with the prayer hand emoji. Keeping it cute and neutral. I'm not angry in my energy. There's no aggression or aggro in my tone. Even where I said, hope you have a nice weekend. There's no full stop after weekend. It's just a prayer hand emoji because I'm keeping it neutral and cool. But I'm not I'm not happy with that in terms of if you are a serious person and if you're a gentleman and if you're somebody who I believe can make a mistake and rectify it and we can neutralize that and start from a fresh slate of you showing me who you are and hopefully impressing me. You would have gotten back to me last night when you said you would. The reason why I think it's so important to be anal about these things as a woman is because this is how you pay attention to how a man treats you and what you can expect for the possible future you will have with him. You need to learn how to not just address things as it happens, but nip it in the bud in real time. Because if we entertain an alternative reality in the context of this conversation with this young man. To be fair, he didn't actually do anything necessarily bad. He didn't ghost me. He did come back to me following afternoon and just say, yeah, 8 p.m. works for me. Now, the issue I have with that is I don't like how casual that, yeah, 8 p.m. works for me was. What would have maybe neutralized my outlook towards this interaction could have been him saying, sorry, I didn't get back to you last night when I said I would. I ended up having a lot of work, but 8 p.m. tonight works for me. Are you still available? The reason why that response to me would have been effective and respectful is because, one, he's acknowledged that he did say he was going to contact me the night before. Two, He's given me a reason why he didn't contact me. And it sounds reasonable. Could be a lie. doesn't matter. It's about the respect <clears throat> and the accountability and keeping to your word as a man. Three. When he hypothetically could have said to me. But 8 p.m. tonight works for me. Are you still available? He's also acknowledging that my time is valuable and I may or may not have made other plans because he didn't get back to me when he said he would because I'm a hot girl and hot girls have lives hot girls are sought after by other men like him so he can't feel too comfortable to assume that I'll be waiting for him outside of the time frame that I should have expected to hear from him because the reality is let me be honest with you let me keep it a full buck I am actually free this evening but out of principle I'm not going to leave my house to go and eat chicken with him this evening it doesn't matter that it's going to be a complimentary meal it doesn't matter that it's an opportunity for me to actually try a restaurant I've been wanting to try for ages I genuinely have been wanting to try this Stork Mayfair restaurant for time I've just not gotten around to it or it's just been that when I have gone on dates with guys it's just not even come to my mind that I should be like, oh, I want to try stalk. You know, it's just one of them ones. So this situation opened up an opportunity for me to try a restaurant that I would have wanted to eat the food. I'm not seeing him taking me to dinner as a treat or as a, oh my God, yeah, this totally repairs everything. No, I want to try the food in that restaurant. And also he doesn't seem like terrible, terrible company. However... As a woman, 
You need to learn how to carry yourself like a queen from the onset. Any small thing that happens, you need to observe it and address it accordingly. It's not everything that happens with a man that you need to necessarily call him out on. It could be that you find other ways to act on your observation. So this is a brilliant example of that, where instead of me antagonizing him and being like, you said you was going to message me last night and you didn't message me. I've decided to be like, I didn't hear from you. So I made other plans. Hope you have a nice weekend. Because me saying, hope you have a nice weekend, implies he's also not seeing me on the Sunday that I said I was available. Because if you remember early on in the conversation, when he asked me when I'm available, I said I can either do Friday, being today, or Sunday. Out of principle, he's not seeing me Sunday either. And I think it's done now with this guy. (laughs) Um, I'm not writing him off as a person. I don't think that he's a bad guy. I don't think that he's horrible. I've not personally encountered any situation with him that makes me feel unsafe. It's just out of principle and knowing that if this was a man who can actually provide the experience that I know I'm likely to enjoy with a man, this isn't how things would start off. It's very possible for the exact same situation to have happened, but the outcome be different. So let me explain how it could have been different. Let's say everything happened the same way, including the point where I got to the club and I was bored out of my brain and I didn't like how he treated me and I felt a bit neglected because he gave me the impression I'd be treated like a queen and he didn't live up to the impression or expectation that he laid out. You know, it could have still been the same interaction where I kindly, politely let him know you were neglectful and I didn't enjoy that and you're gonna have to make it up to me if you're talking to me he could have been like I'm so sorry I would love to make it up to you can we do dinner and I could have been like you know like how I did in this conversation I'm open to dinner let me know where you have in mind I'll let you know if I like it he suggested a restaurant that I do like but I wanted to try somewhere else so I suggested where I want to go now if he had messaged me last night when I was expecting to hear from him to say hey um I am available tomorrow night now I would probably feel a little bit more positive about the idea of putting in my diary that I'm seeing him tonight being the following day I also if I had gone on that dinner date with him I probably to throw my weight around would have been like here's my pickup address for the Uber Please send me a screenshot of the driver when it's nearby. Because him taking me out to dinner, he's just taking me to dinner. Like it's not, it's not a, oh, this is amazing. Oh my God. It's just dinner. But for me to still lean into said queen treatment that he said he was going to give me at the club, you calling me a car. Oh, and you're also calling me a car home. So not only is this this dinner going to cost you maybe 200 or so pounds or just under that, you're also going to be paying for my Ubers just because. But that's a hypothesis because I'm not seeing him. I'm not seeing him tonight. There's no way. Um, I'm not happy with that. Oh, he's replied. Let's see what he said. (laughs) He said, oh, my days. My bad. I thought I said, if not 8 p.m., it would be 9 p.m. I didn't cancel the night. I only needed to be sure on the time, which is why I said either 8 or 9 p.m. So this is what I mean by it's so important to see men for what they are. This is a young man. Yeah, he's a couple years older than me, give or take, but the way he types, the way he talks, it's very young. The oh my days, in response to me saying, you said you'd get back to me yesterday night, 
and I didn't hear from you, so I made other plans. Hope you have a nice weekend. His response is, oh, my days. My bad. I thought I said, if not 8 p.m., then it will be 9 p.m. Doesn't matter because he still said to me, I need to get back to you tonight because I might have to work tomorrow. I'm not interested in all this back and forth because what will happen now is if I respond to him, it's just going to be a pointless argument. And I'm not invested enough in this connection with this person to be arguing about semantics. Because that's what the argument will boil down to. It will boil down to, well, you said this and you said this and I should have said this. And now I don't even find it hot to be talking to him. Like, I'm not turned on. I do think that as a man, if he was grown, here's how he probably could have responded. Because I'm not going to lie, it is a bit savage of me to have been like, I didn't hear from you last night, so I made other plans. But the problem is, if you're talking to hot girls, you need to understand that there are other people that want to take the hot girls out. So what I'm trying to communicate to him through me being like, I didn't hear from you last night, so I made other plans, is me saying, another man has whisked me away, baby. What are you going to do about it? That's what I'm communicating non-verbally because that's how men see it what other possible plans are you making what other plans could you be making that's better than me taking you to dinner shawty that's how he's seeing it so i've bruised his ego and for nigerian men it's a nigerian man for nigerian men yes you have to bruise their ego i don't believe in abusing people insulting people being horrible to people no i believe in bruising men's egos by edging them so what that means is just when he thinks he's sort of getting somewhere with you if he teeters on the line of disappointing you or turning you off you need to have a response to that cause and effect in this life our actions create outcomes if a man acts in a certain way to you don't be afraid to present the outcome so if a grown man had seen the message I said where I said to him last, you said you get back to me yesterday night and I didn't hear from you, so I made other plans. Hope you have a nice weekend. Pray a hand emoji. A grown man could have been like, oh, even if he still said, oh, my days. Oh, my days is fine. Oh, my days. Damn, you're moving so fast, huh? Well, when can I next see you then? Simple as that. Simple as that. Or if he's curious, he can be like, what plans? He could make a joke and be like, what plans are you making that's better than me taking you out? There's ways to go about this as a man. But I think it's so important to give men a chance to show you who they are. Because I could have decided to not even respond to him when he told me he took someone to the hospital. Because at that point, I'm in the club on my own board. The man who has brought me here has disappeared. You're supposed to be hosting me as a queen. Why am I on my own in the VIP section with random people popping bottles that I'm not even drinking? Why have you put yourself in that position? Also, you've put yourself in a position to possibly lose me to another baller. And me saying another baller, I'm not even including this man as a baller because I don't know what his financial status is. I do know that he's connected in the way that I want him to be, but he's put himself in a position to possibly lose my attention that could have been to him to another man who's probably going to give me more compliments and attention. So that already gives me insight that he probably doesn't like me that much. Or maybe he's attracted to me, but this is his way of doing things. Very sort of that laid back, casual, I don't like that energy. I'm not interested in that. I'm not drawn to that. Doesn't turn me on, doesn't entice me at all. It's not something that makes me want to prove myself to a man. I am not 23 years old anymore. I am 20 whole fucking nine. I'm a whole woman. Sorry. So if a grown man was the person I was interacting, there could have been room for this to be redeemable. But there's not. And so when you're dating men, right, you need to always, always, always be observing these men the most in the beginning. And you need to trust your observations 
you can't be doing benefit of the doubt every single time because be a benefit should be earned. You don't just be giving benefits to people for no reason. And that's something that bothers me a lot when it comes to women and how they interact with men. They're giving out, handing out benefits for free. Stop doing that. If a man is laid back and lazy, you need to recognise that if this is him in the beginning when he's supposed to be impressing you, if this is him at his sort of like best foot forward stance, it's only going downhill from here because the more comfortable you both become, the less of a reason there is for a man to constantly feel inclined to put his best foot forward because you've made him feel comfortable. That's why I believe it's so important to keep men on their toes. It doesn't mean that you're constantly creating this suffocating environment of unpredictability and discomfort and making him feel like he's not sure where he stands with you. No. What I'm saying is there's ways to go about your observations that will lead to you getting quicker results. Even if the result is recognizing this guy's a time waster, let me be going. Because if you do not pay attention to your observations, if you engage with a time wasting man, you could lose six months of your life just dilly dallying with that man. If you do not pay attention to your observations, you could be that woman who, yeah, your boyfriend is provider or he's got money and he gives you stuff and he's actually kind of sweet sometimes, but there's little nagging things that you wish weren't part of the relationship, but you sort of just told yourself to accept it because you're used to being uncomfortable. Discomfort does not have to be your default, okay? You don't have to be comfortable with things just because other women have tolerated it from him in the past, it's okay to be the different person he meets. Because I know with this guy, right, that I just read out my text interaction with, he's probably pissed off because of his ego as opposed to him being pissed off. Oh, I really wanted to see this guy. Oh, my God, I've been so looking forward. Oh, my God, I've been thinking all night about when I see her tomorrow. No, I don't think he's been fantasizing or carrying me in his frontal lobe because he's a person, he's got a life. He don't know me like that. Yes, I'm an attractive woman, but it's also important to not be pushing your delusions of grandeur in the wrong direction in terms of overestimating your place in a man's life. Just because you're pretty, just because a guy has expressed attraction to you, doesn't give you the license to overestimate your position in his life. You're not exceptional just because he fancies you. You only become exceptional to a man when you behave exceptionally. And what does behaving exceptionally look like? Behaving exceptionally looks like being a woman that behaves in a way that he's not seen in his like He's confused as to why you are so comfortable talking to him like that. And it's not that you're insulting him. It's more your ability to walk away is so sexy. He's like, Ra, why is she so comfortable walking away from me why is she as chilled out as i am wait she must she must be the price that's how they see it that's how they see it me i'm tired of trying to uh, reason with women who need all this theoretical empirical scientific peer-reviewed data to just simply acknowledge the facts for what they are and then gravitate towards women who are hard to read and hard to please. Being a woman who is hard to read and hard to please does not mean that you are this person who is constantly angry, complaining and impossible to understand. No. Being a woman that's hard to read and hard to please simply means when things are good, you are relaxed, fun, playful, friendly, energetic and pleasant to be around because you're not waiting for anything to go wrong, you're chilling. But when things change, you acknowledge the observations for what they are and you respond accordingly, whether that requires you to pull away from him and give your attention elsewhere, whether that means you're going to stop engaging with him until you hear a response or a message 
or some sort of communication that satisfies you, whether that means you withdrawing the entire pussy and your full self from the situation and making him jump through the hoops you have laid out for him to prove his apology towards you. Women like that, who are hard to read and hard to please, get way further with men than the women who are absolute doormat, pick me, do whatever, I'll forgive you, I'm an understanding girlfriend. Which one is understanding girlfriend? I'm not an understanding girlfriend. Because to be an understanding girlfriend, that implies that there are things that you need to accept despite it making you unhappy or uncomfortable. Because being uncomfortable as a person... What does that mean? Being uncomfortable and being understanding. It basically means that, yeah, I'm not really happy here. But I'm understanding though. Not really happy here, but you know, I can see why he's like that. I'll I'll cut him some slack because he's a human being. Be careful. Be careful with the uncomfortable thing. Be careful with letting discomfort be your norm. Because that's how you enter understanding girlfriend territory. And that's how you get to a place where you're not comfortable advocating for yourself. You're not comfortable with the idea of putting your foot down. Because you're the understanding girlfriend. I'm not the understanding girlfriend. Don't give me no reason to be an understanding girlfriend. Because there's a difference between acknowledging that life is unforgiving and aggressive and unexpected and fucking random and so it means no matter how much we love and are loved by the people around us things can go wrong both within and outside of their control and if people make mistakes depending on the weight and sincerity of their apology you can decide if the forgiveness is worth it And there'll be times when there's things that happen beyond that person who loves you control. And you have to have the discernment to be able to judge whether this is a time for you to move mad or for you to exercise some nuanced thinking. That's very different to understanding girlfriend who just tolerates discomfort and turns it into some sort of virtuous character trait to justify being a doormat are you an understanding girlfriend or are you a fucking pushover doormat me I'm not an understanding girlfriend no I'm not I'm not because if you don't give me a reason to have to compromise on basic fundamental respect i.e for example the understanding girlfriend would have a boyfriend that will decide out of nowhere to start talking to her anyhow and she will feel her maybe might even address it but then she'll be like okay fine i forgive you you said you're sorry fine i forgive you and it will happen again and she'll still stay couldn't be me the first sign of disrespect the first encounter with a man feeling comfortable, with making me feel uncomfortable, I act on it. It won't always be a blown out reaction. It won't always be dramatic. Because remember what I said earlier about the response being proportional to the situation. So like we used the example of the text message interaction that I read out. I chose that, you know what, this guy isn't even worth me sitting across the dinner table with because... He's not a gentleman. He's not a man of his word. If you tell me you're going to do something, you've opened room for me to expect you to do it. It's as simple as that. So if you are not keeping up to your word, I'm going to have to remove marks from your overall grade. That's how we do things around here. Because if you continue to let things slide and chalk it to, oh, it's nothing, it, it's a minor thing. Oh, yeah, he did kind of be a bit sassy with me, but it's fine. I'll just see you on Friday, whatever. No, it's not fine. 
not in my eyes, not in my books, not on my watch. It's not fine. I'm not fine with being spoken to like that. I know what I am. I know who I am. I know my value as a woman, as a person. I know what I deserve. And for me, I know what kind of interactions I expect to have with a man who is supposed to be making up to me or who is supposed to be fancying me or who is supposed to be impressing me. So I do believe and stand by the idea that men only need one chance. If you feel like you have to give a man more than one chance, the only scenario I can imagine giving a guy a second chance in is if he has gone out of his way to genuinely prove to you that he wants that extra chance. And in him proving to you that he wants that extra chance, you can see a clear display of behavior that shows I'm serious about you. So what can that look like? Well, we love an I'm sorry gift. We love a I'll make it up to you gift. We love a I would love for you to just go have some fun. Enjoy your day. Here's two grand. We love that. We very much love that. So this is why I believe from the onset, before you even get into a scenario with a guy who might possibly disappoint you, first of all, assess whether he is within the capability of facilitating the lifestyle that you would enjoy of a guy. And that might look different for every woman. It will also look different for every guy that you might take a liking to. So For example, with this guy who I read out the text interaction with, he's not somebody that I would marry. He's not someone that I see myself dating, let alone dating long term. But he's someone who I see as a potential person who I can leverage the attraction he has to me. Because the reality is he wants to sleep with me. He didn't invite me to the club because he thinks that I'd be a great person to have a conversation with. He invited me to the club because he knows I look good and there might be opportunity for him to possibly impress me by bringing me into the club. But unfortunately, that didn't work out for him. He probably sees me as somebody that he does want to sleep with. And now that I have confused and somewhat rejected him, his fondness for me will in fact grow. Men are very predictable in that way. I look forward to coming back to you with updates pertaining to this particular guy But what I can categorically predict right now is that he is going to develop an ambiguously confused admiration and attraction to me, which is what happens when you reject men. But you kind of do it in a way that's hard to read. So nothing I said was hard to understand or hard to read, but he almost had a chance with me. And I was being kind of nice to him or pleasant to him. And now, due to his own doing, the ball has dropped. And it's a lesson for him. It's a lesson for everybody listening. It's a lesson for all involved in the world of dating men. You will have a dramatically different life if you administer consequences in real time. Not every consequence is the same in weight or in impact because not every situation that you're responding to with a consequence warrants the same weight or impact in consequence so I love how I handled that and that's another thing when you're interacting with men you want to start seeing the interaction from a place of will the future me be proud of how I've handled myself in this interaction regardless of how it ends up turning out Because you're not a mind reader, you're not a palm reader, you can't read into the future to know how things are going to go with this guy, especially if they started out going so well. And I think it's important to say this because I think sometimes what happens is when situations go a bit left with a guy, and I have this habit, which I've recently been working on and it's benefiting me to work on this, I have this habit where when situations go left with a guy, 
And the guy is somebody who, from my observations, there was nothing wrong. He was great. He was respectful. Things were going well. And now suddenly it's not gone the way I thought it would. I tend to fall into this pattern of self-blame, being like, oh, I should have known he was a time waster. I should have known from the color of his shirt that he was going to waste my time. Like, I find this arbitrary reason to revisit in hindsight as something that I should have observed. And it's a behavior of self-blame, essentially. And as I've gotten a bit older, I've had to recognize that and nip it in the bud. Because when I used to have a therapist and I'll talk to her about this behavior of mine, she would say to me, when you go to watch a movie, and it's a movie that you've seen the trailer, you've heard so many rave reviews about it, you go in with the expectation to enjoy the movie because the trailer looks good, and that's the whole point of a trailer. The trailer is supposed to make you feel enticed to want to watch the movie, and the reviews are supposed to also encourage you to want to go see it. So you go watch the movie and you realise you didn't enjoy it. Are you going to be angry at yourself for not enjoying the movie? Or are you going to be like, well, I didn't enjoy that. I thought I was going to enjoy it, but I didn't enjoy it. Oh, well, maybe in future I'll find another movie that I enjoy watching. Which sounds more realistic and accurate to the behaviour of a human being that is balanced and has a, a relationship with their self that's healthy enough to understand that sometimes... Things happen and it's actually not your fault. You could do everything by the book. You could do everything according to, you know, suggestions that I throw out in terms of here's how to navigate men of X, Y, Z kind of class or here's how to carry yourself in this kind of situation. You could do everything in air quotes right, quote unquote right. And you can still end up in a scenario of a guy where you end up being disappointed because it's not about you. It's about him and how he chooses to manoeuvre certain scenarios. And you have to be evolved enough to detach yourself from that outcome and not make it about you. Because sometimes making it about you too much is what keeps you traumatically bound to that man. You get too stuck with the outcome of that scenario, what it should have been, what you should have said. Uh, he probably thinks this of me now. Uh, uh. Before you know it, it's so much energetic emphasis being placed on some any guy this is some any guy and that's why I felt like it was important for me to share my own real-time decision making my real-time outlook to give you insight into how I handle things and to understand that it doesn't matter what you say to men as long as that person is not a gentleman who wants to show up, you're still probably not going to get that far with him. Yeah, you might get a little further than you would if he was behaving like a pick-me, but if things aren't destined to last with that guy, it won't last. But it's important, regardless of whether it lasts or not, it's important to be proud of how you handled it. So with this example that I read out to you of the interaction with this guy via text message, I'm very proud of how I handled it very proud because I advocated for myself I spoke my mind I gave him opportunity to rectify the damage he'd done he didn't live up to the word and expectation he created i.e telling me I'll get back to you tonight and I chose to hold on to that because I was really looking for a reason to disqualify him and it's not because I'm trying to reinforce this mindset of see nothing works out with men men are bad you see why you can't trust men no that's not what I'm doing what I'm doing is I've already assessed this isn't someone that I would date this isn't someone who I necessarily want to be romantically involved with however this could be a person to have as a plug if I want to go to the club with my girls or if I want to have a cheeky dinner in Mayfair <laughs> and also he's a cool person to know in the music industry um, given that I want to be in more environments around my favorite musicians. So it's the kind of networking, but at the same time, understanding that if there's room for some sort of romantic involvement on his part, I know I can leverage that without getting emotionally involved. But because there's not enough factors in place for me to justify talking to this guy or seeing this guy, 
it's okay to just like let things float away in a very neutral, level-headed manner that you can look back on and be proud of. I know that the worst you can say about me is that I'm a strict babe. And I love, I love when men describe me as a strict babe. <coughs> yes, I am a strict babe. I'm supposed to be a strict babe. Can you see how I look? I'm stunning. So this is not a place where just anybody can come and have access. Being a strict babe will get you way further than being a lenient, uh, understanding girlfriend type of babe. That shit don't work. I see it happen all the time. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. Everyone wants to think they're the exception, but nobody wants to behave exceptionally. Nobody's willing to move mad because I consider what I did today moving mad. And it's not moving mad as in helter skelter, bull in the fucking china shop. No, it's moving mad as in most women, right, who are in a situation like this, yeah, what most women would do is they will see the text message of him getting back to them the following day to say, yeah, I'm free at 8 p.m. instead of that night that he said he was going to do it the night before. And they will still go and eat chicken and rice. And that's fine. I ain't judging because I could have still chosen to be like, you know what? Fine. It's a minor. I'll go and eat the free food and be going. But it's the principle of knowing that this guy is actually on borrowed time because the scenario that has brought us to a place where he's taking me out for food is because he's supposed to be repairing another offense of him telling me he's going to treat me like a queen in the club and me having the complete opposite experience. So you have to also be very, very on top of what you're doing. Pay attention. Curate it. Don't be scared to steer the ship. I'm not, as of principle, I'm not eating that free chicken and rice. No. And at this point, there's no reason to even continue conversing with him, talking about what well, you're going to have to make up to it. There's nothing to talk about. There's nothing to talk about. Yeah? When I see him, in person next time there'll probably be another time i'll see him in person i know that he's gonna you know his energy towards me it's not gonna necessarily be apologetic but i do think that he's gonna want to be like rah you're so savage like rah we want to see you uh -uh now and he might try again with me but until that happens there's nothing to hold on to with this man so it's okay to let men go okay it's okay to treat men like buses like another one is coming it's just a man it's just a man mind you the man that you're probably trying to cling on to he's only in your peripheral because he wants to press your nyash he's not in your life because he's like oh, i really want to provide for her i really want to make her life easier i really want to support her in her dreams and her goals i just want to fan her flame he's not there doing that he wants to press your titty this one that I was talking to on text, he wants to press my titty and finger me. That's what he wants to do. He's not said any of that to me, but that's why he's sniffing around. Do you think men approach you based on how you look to explore your personality? What do you think this is? They're approaching you based on how you look to hopefully riz you up to a place where they can feel what your pussy feels like. And you cannot be scared of that. You have to own it and make them work for it. Even if you're never going to give them pussy, you still make them work like they're going to get it. That's how you utilize your power. If you don't do that, yeah, mumu. And they'll take advantage of you. And you'll be that woman who's carrying the bitter narrative well into your 50s. You'll be that woman who is in the Instagram comments of my page talking about some, hey, well, if a man provides for you, what are you providing? Nothing. I'm the prize. The prize does not provide. Auntie. I, I highly doubt this guy is going to listen. Most men, they just see you as what they want to get from you. They don't necessarily see you and think, oh, I really want to just submerge myself in everything to do with this girl because I fancy her. I'm going to listen to all her podcasts. I'm going to scroll through all her pictures. I'm going to watch all her stories. No. Most men will go as far as probably watching all your stories, maybe liking a couple pictures, but they're not about to submerge themselves in your world. <laughs> so to wrap up this 
elongated thought stream. I want to remind you to know your worth and act on it. That's it. I hope you have a fucking smashing day whenever you're listening. And as always, I'll catch you in the next thought stream.